let me discuss the next group of anti hyperlipidemic drug that is nicotinic acid all right so the nicotinic acid basically the derivative that is niacin right that is niacin niacin as such it is an inexpensive drug right as such it is an inexpensive drug and basically this is vitamin b3 right basically this is vitamin b3 what this nicotinic acid will do is it will decrease the ldl cholesterol and as well as vldl and as well as triglycerides but the main action of this particular niacin or nicotinic acid is to increase the hdl cholesterol all right so the main action is to increase the right the main action is to increase the hdl cholesterol and along with that it will also decrease the ldl along with that it will also decrease the vldl and then it will also decrease the triglycerides right it will also decrease the triglycerides all right so this is what is being done by the nicotinic acid but the its main action is to increase the hdl all right now you take among all the hypolipidemic drugs right among all the hypolipidemic drugs niacin has maximum hdl increasing property right niacin it has maximum hdl increasing property among all the hypolipidemic drugs now therefore it is useful in patients who are having increased risk of coronary artery disease so those patients who are having right those patients who are having increased risk of coronary artery disease this particular niacin is very much useful because in case of the coronary artery disease one of the major risk factor is decrease in the hdl all right in coronary artery disease one of the major risk factor is decrease in the hdl levels now what is your niacin doing niacin is increasing the hdl so because it is increasing the hdl it can be used in those individuals who are having increased risk of the coronary artery disease all right now not only that this particular the niacin it can also decrease the lipoprotein a levels right it can also decrease the lipoprotein a levels and it will also decrease the fibrinogen right it will also decrease the fibrinogen now in which type of primary hyperlipoproteinemias this particular niacin is used remember this particular niacin or the nicotinic acid it is used in case of type 2b type 3 and as well as type 4 disorders so in case of this particular type of hyperlipoproteinemias the nicotinic acid is being used now if you take the problem with the niacin the main problem with the nicotinic acid or niacin is the compliance right the main problem is the compliance compliance is one of the limiting feature of this particular nicotinic acid now what is that particular compliance and what is that problem we will see now if you see the adverse effects of this particular niacin or nicotinic acid the adverse effect is mainly it will cause very severe itching that is called pruritus and this will also cause cutaneous flushing right this will also cause cutaneous flushing now because of these two reasons that is pruritus and as well as cutaneous flushing the compliance of the niacin by the patient is reduced now 
why this particular niacin will cause pruritus and cutaneous flushing is that is due to vasodilatory action of the niacin right that is due to vasodilatory action of the niacin right that is due to vasodilatory action of the niacin now why is this particular vasodilatation act why vasodilatation occurring by niacin is that is mainly this niacin it will release the prostaglandins niacin will release the prostaglandins this prostaglandins will cause this vasodilatation and because of this vasodilatation the individual is having cutaneous flushing now now if you can reduce the prostaglandins all right if you can reduce the prostaglandin synthesis then the cutaneous flushing can be prevented now how will you reduce that particular prostaglandin synthesis you have to give a pre treatment with aspirin right you give the pre treatment with aspirin so whenever you give a pre treatment with aspirin that will reduce the prostaglandin synthesis once the prostaglandin synthesis is being reduced that will inhibit the vasodilatation and that will inhibit the cutaneous flushing all right now now in order to minimize this particular adverse effects which is being caused by niacin what is the precaution what we have to take is this niacin it is given in low doses right this particular niacin it is given in low doses all right and the other adverse effects which are being caused by the niacin is niacin will cause gastrointestinal toxicity right niacin will cause gastrointestinal toxicity and it will also cause hyperuricemia right it will also cause hyperuricemia all right now apart from hyperuricemia and gastrointestinal toxicity remember niacin can lead to hepatotoxicity right niacin can also lead to right niacin can also lead to hepatotoxicity which is manifested by fall in both ldl and as well as hdl cholesterol so because of this hepatotoxicity there is fall in both ldl and as well as the hdl cholesterol levels right it is character because of hepatotoxicity niacin can cause both decrease in ldl and as well as the hdl cholesterol levels all right so this is about your niacin or a nicotinic acid so remember nicotinic acid which is nothing but the niacin which is nothing but vitamin b3 its main action is to increase the hdl levels you take among all the hypolipidemic drugs it is only the niacin which will increase the hdl so that is the reason why it is used in those individuals who are having increased risk of coronary artery disease and not only that niacin will also decrease the ldl vldl and triglycerides and apart from that it will also decrease the lipoprotein a and as well as it will decrease the fibrinogen levels and in which type of hyperlipoproteinemia these are used is they are used in case of type 2b type 3 and as well as type 4 type of hyperlipoproteinemia and the adverse effects of these particular drugs is mainly pruritus and as well as cutaneous flushing and this pruritus and as well as cutaneous flushing is mainly due to vasodilatory action of these particular drugs and this vasodilatory action of this niacin is mainly because of the release of the prostaglandins by the niacin and if you give any particular drug which will reduce the prostaglandin then these adverse effects can be minimized so you have to give a pre treatment with aspirin which will inhibit the prostaglandin synthesis and thereby the adverse effects can be minimized so the precaution what we have to take is in order to reduce the adverse effects caused by niacin you have to use this particular niacin in low doses and the other adverse effects caused by niacin is gastrointestinal toxicity and hyperuricemia and the other thing is the hepatotoxicity due to which the niacin can reduce both ldl and as well as hdl levels